If you are concerned about Bitcoin privacy, there are a variety of different tools available to your disposal. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Paynims, the ability to publicly share an ID that can be reused to both send and receive payments. This only reveals an actual receiving address to the sender and recipient of said transaction, which prevents surveillance firms from getting a starting point to track said transactions. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin. Before we dive in, quick shout out to sponsors of the show, ShakePay.com. If you're in Canada and you're buying Bitcoin, this is a very simple way to do it. No deposit fees, no withdrawal fees, thin spread. And if you use the link down below after your first hundred bucks, they will give you 30 bucks for free to grab some extra sats. They also, of course, give you the same deal if you refer friends. And after you do refer a friend, you can shake your phone every single day for free sats as well. They've also got a sats back visa card that I've done a video on. Be sure to check them out. Links are down below. Up next, Ledin.io, you can use your Bitcoin for a ton of different services. In particular, if you're in a pinch and you need to get your hands on dollars, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin, well, you can use their uh, Bitcoin back loan program here. You can deposit Bitcoin, get dollars to your bank account within 24 hours. And when you pay those dollars back, you back, get back the same amount of Bitcoin. They've also got their savings accounts for Bitcoin and USDC and their B2X offering if you're feeling a little bullish. Links are down below. Uh, now, living on Bitcoin has never been easier. BitRefill helps with this a ton. It's available in Canada and all over the world. And you can buy any gift card your little heart desires with Bitcoin, both on chain and via Lightning Network. You earn sats back as you shop, and they also have a referral program to earn you additional sats. So be sure to check them out. Now, Keystone, one of my favorite and most used hardware wallets. This thing is badass. It is 100% air-gapped, meaning you never plug it into anything internet connected. It's all offline via QR code. This keeps your keys safe and away from internet connections. Uh, I highly recommend you upgrade to the Bitcoin-only firmware because then it works beautifully with Blue Wallet, Wasabi, Spectre, Sparrow, all that stuff, and is really great in a multi-sig setup. So check them out. Links are in the show notes. And finally, if you're backing up any important Bitcoin wallet, be sure to check out the bill fuddle over at privacypros.io. Storing your seed phrase in paper may not cut it. Why? Because fire damage, water damage, maybe even just accidentally discarding the thing if you're not careful. If you get it in solid steel, those worries tend to go away. Uh, this is how I back up my important Bitcoin wallets and it gives me that peace of mind uh, to sleep knowing that my seed phrase is safe. Be sure to check them out. And with that, let's dive in. Just a quick prerequisite here. If you are not already familiar with using Samurai Wallet, you should check it out beforehand. I do have a full tutorial on it. You can check it out in the show notes down below. Now, in terms of other wallets that are implementing Paynims, currently Sparrow Wallet allows you to send to a Paynim ID, uh, though it cannot yet receive that way, at the time of recording this video, I'm sure that will change in the future. And I also hear rumblings of Blue Wallet implementing something like this in the future as well. So just keep your eyes peeled uh, as it will likely be available on multiple platforms in the future. But for today, I will be using two phones, both loaded up with Samurai Wallet to execute these transactions. Now, if you are setting up your Samurai wallet today, there's one thing to note as well as you're going through the setup process, which is detailed here in my other video, make sure you hit a button when it asks you if you'd like to claim your Paynim ID because that's what you'll be using here today. So I've got in front of me here two phones set up with Samurai Wallet that already have some funds available in them that have been tested with. Uh, but first, we're going to check out how to share your Paynim information with anyone. So all you're going to do here is the little plus sign down at the bottom, and you'll see an option that says Paynims. When you tap on that, this is your Paynim ID. You're going to have a unique picture here, and then you're going to have an easily readable uh, unique ID. In this case, it's Lingering Boat 613. 
And that can be shared with anybody so that they uh, can connect with you and send you payments. Now, the other way to share that information is to hit the share button up in the top middle. This gives you a QR code or a code down below which you can tap on and copy, okay? Uh, so either way, you can share this information and I can do the same on the opposite phone here, which I'll bring up. Um, and I'm actually going to add this one as a contact from these other phones. So I'm gonna hit plus and paynims. And you can see I already have a contact on this phone here. Now, the way I'm going to go about doing this is I can either hit plus and scan a QR code or paste a payment code. So if another individual had texted me or sent via text app that code down at the bottom there, I could paste it in. But in this case, I'm gonna scan the QR code since I'm in the presence of it right now. Great. And so in scanning that, it shows me hey, this is the Paynim ID in question. Would you like to follow this Paynim? And I'm going to say, yes, I'm gonna hit follow, yes. And this will now follow this individual and I will be able to uh, start potentially sending them payments, okay? There is also the ability to connect to this person. So it says blockchain connect with this individual, Lingering Boat 613, to generate a unique private address uh, or unique private addresses for sending Bitcoin to this contact. So it's basically a way of this this account or rather this wallet being able to independently generate unique addresses between me and this other individual that all I need is their their payment code all right and this way I don't need to get receiving addresses from them every single time okay um, this does incur an on-chain fee to do of 15,000 sats it is a one-time thing but uh, it is necessary in order to establish that communication so that I have enough information to be able to generate those unique payment addresses without anybody being able to peer in on them uh, and know what's going on. Now, I will do that uh, right now. I'm going to hit connect. Okay, and it says a one-time connection fee, and this is 15,000 sats plus whatever the minor fee based on you know how busy uh, the Bitcoin network is today. Uh, so it's around 17,000 sats will be charged to follow the contact. This fee covers the cost of creating a one-time transaction to create a record on the blockchain. This keeps Paynims decentralized. So I'm gonna say, okay, follow. And this creates an, a one-time transaction that is sent out in order to achieve this. So that is all, all set and ready to go. I have followed and connected to this individual, but I wanna do it the other way around so that I can also uh, send back and forth here. So if I back out here, I can now see an added contact that I am following. Uh, I only have one follower, which is the other contact. I would need the other person to follow me if I want to receive payments from them. So let's see what that would look like here. So I can X out of that. Uh, on, on my Paynim, I can also hit share to bring up my QR code or my code down below to share with them. So same thing, the other person would scan my code and then choose to follow, say yes. Perfect, and now it says that I am following this individual uh, and if I choose to, I can hit connect and pay a fee to be able to uh, generate individual hidden addresses, not hidden addresses, but uh, not publicly seen addresses uh, and only disclose between the sender and receiver uh, if I want to do that. Now, I don't need to do that if I'm not gonna be sending back to the other account, so I'm not gonna do that for now, uh, but Let's head back to the original wallet. It's also worth noting here that once I've refreshed, I can see I now have two followers on this other wallet and I can see Lingering Boat 613 is now a follower of mine. 
in order to send to a Paynim contact that you've ended and that you've added rather, you do need to wait for that 17,000 or 15,000, whatever it was, uh, initial transaction to confirm. Okay. So while it's sat as pending and it's unconfirmed, uh, I cannot yet generate new receiving addresses for that individual. So once that is confirmed, I will be able to create a Paynim transaction between the two of us. So we'll just wait for that to happen and we'll be right back. With that initial transaction now confirmed, I can now send via Paynim to my new contact. So how do I go about doing that? I'm going to hit the plus button in the bottom right and I'm going to, well, one of two ways. I can hit send or I can go to Paynims. I'm going to go to send right now. And then in the top middle here, there's a little uh, icon of like a, an avatar. We're going to tap there. We're going to choose who we'd like to send to. So I'm going to uh, send to lingering boat 613. And then we're going to choose the amount we'd like to send. I'm going to send... Uh, let's say 60,000 sats. We will, there are privacy add-ons here that we will look at in a moment, but uh, for now, we're going to leave those. We'll talk about those in a moment, okay? Review transaction, set your sats per byte, and we will hit send. All right, transaction has now been sent and we can take a peek at the other wallet to see it incoming. Here on the second phone, we can see the incoming transaction and we can actually see a little note below it saying that it's coming from Billowing Snow 3C3, which is the Paynim ID of the previous wallet. Now let's go back to that other privacy feature that I glossed over initially, and that was stowaway transactions. What this does, it actually allows you when sending to another Paynim ID to have that person collaborate on the transaction with you and add Bitcoin to that transaction. And in doing so, obfuscate the actual amount that is being sent. By them adding Bitcoin into the mix as you're sending, it is a two-person coin join and, uh, and, and it's very difficult, if not impossible, to tell the amount uh, and where it was sent to um, in terms of who was sending to whom and for how much. And so we're going to walk through this. Uh, all you need to do in this instance prior to setup is kind of what we did previously. Uh, for the sender, you need to be following and connected to the recipient. And for the recipient, you just need to be following the original uh, sender. So we're now going to send some money back to the original wallet and we're going to use Cahoots or a two-person coin join to do so. So I'm going to hit the plus button, I'm going to hit send, and I'm going to leave the recipient field blank. I'm going to decide the amount that I'd like to send. So I'm going to send over about 40,000 sats. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to go down and I'm going to turn on cahoots here and we're going to select stowaway. So this is a transaction between two samurai users and it will leave no distinguishing fingerprint on the blockchain, including the amount spent. So you won't be able to tell the actual amount transacted because the other wallet is going to contribute to this transaction. Now, this will involve both wallets at once. The recipient has a step to do here as well. So I'm gonna hit stowaway. I'm going to go to online, and then I have to choose a collaborator. I only have one person. And then I'm going to hit review transaction. And I'm going to set my transaction fee. Looking at the blockchain right now, five sats per byte will be fine. I'm going to hit begin stowaway. It will initialize the process. 
and then it's going to have the mixing partner now needs to go ahead and take some action. So you would uh, communicate to the person that they need to check their phone. So we're going to do just that. So here within the recipient wallet, I'm also going to hit the plus sign. I'm going to hit receive. And then the, the top right, I'm going to hit the three dots and hit receive online cahoots. Now it detects the incoming transaction or the proposal to create a transaction. Would you like to collaborate? I hit yes. Okay, so at this point, we're just waiting for the original sender to finish the transaction back on the original wallet here, we can see that we're at step 505. Confirm if you would like to send the transaction. All I need to do is hit that bottom button there. Yes. And that transaction has now been sent. So I can see the adjustment in my, uh, my balance. I can see 40,000 sats being sent out plus a 248 sat on-chain fee. I can also see the updated balance on the recipient end and a 40,000 sat transaction that is in the process of confirming. Now, what has happened here, if we wanna take a look a little bit deeper, is I can uh, tap on this transaction and examine exactly what's going on here. Now, remember, this was a transaction for 40,000 sats. However, we can see that here in the description or in, in the breakdown of what happened, there were two UTXOs of Bitcoin for seemingly random amounts, you know, 264,000 sats and 88,000 sats. And then there are two outputs, one for 128,000 sats and one for 224,000 sats. And so nowhere in there do you see the actual amount that was transacted because this wallet and the other wallet both contributed amounts into this transaction and took what was needed after the fact, but nobody on the outside looking in would understand who was sending what to who and what the actual amount that was being sent is. So I just want to take a moment and clarify between following and utilizing paynim functions and connecting and utilizing paynim functions. So following pertains to if you want to follow and then send a paynim transaction to an individual that is currently online. It also pertains to if you're following each other and want to do a cahoots transaction or a two-person coin join. In both instances, the recipient needs to be online uh, in order to make that transaction possible. However, if you would like to be able to send to that Paynim ID at any point, even if they're not online as a regular single transaction, then you need to do the connect feature. This is optional and only if you want to be able to send at any time. And what this does is, as I mentioned in the video, 15,000 sats plus minor fees to do that initial connection. That gives you the ability to then create new receiving addresses for that Paynim every single time so that you can send to that person even when they are not online to respond. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, subscribe, share, all those things, super important. They really do help the show. Uh, if you wanna help the show in another way, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors down below, ShakePay, Leaden, BitRefill, Keystone, Bill Foddle, all in the show notes. And if you really liked what you saw, you can always hit me up with a Bitcoin tip at my strike page. That is strike.me slash BTC sessions. You go there, type in any amount you like, hit the tip button. You will be greeted with a lightning invoice, or if you tap to the right on that, arrow there, you'll be hit up with a regular Bitcoin QR code. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening, wherever you may be. See you guys next time for your daily session. Hold the Bitcoin.